اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم these are the ramadan daily quran studies for the year 2024 written by zahid aziz and produced by amdia anjuman ishad islam lahore uk study 1 humanity wide approach of surah fatiha first chapter of the quran الحمد لله رب العالمين Praise be to Allah the Lord of the worlds 1 1 This is the first verse of the first chapter of the Holy Quran The word translated as Lord is Rabb which means one who fosters something to a state of perfection through various stages of development The words for Lord of the Worlds are Rabbul Alamin. This means that Allah acts as Lord for all that is in any kind of world, that is anywhere in this universe. Here we will take worlds as referring to all nations of humanity, although more generally it applies to all other worlds, for example the animal world. Explaining the significance of Allah as being the Lord of all nations Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad wrote Our God has not withheld his bounty from any people The powers and faculties which he bestowed on the ancient peoples of India have also been bestowed on the Arabs the Persians the Syrians the Chinese the Japanese the Europeans and the Americans For all of them the earth of God serves as a floor and for all of them his sun moon and stars give light and also perform other functions all of them derive benefit from the air water fire earth and other things created by god and all of them use the produce of the earth its corns and its herbs its flowers and its fruits these liberal ways of god teach us that we also should do good to all mankind and should not be narrow minded nor limit our sympathy opening the holy quran with this verse which embodies such breadth of view is a reply to those nations who limit each to itself the universal bounty and providence of god and regard other peoples as though they were not a creation of god or as though having once been created they have since been completely forsaken and forgotten by him it needs no argument therefore to say that the true and perfect god in whom we must all believe is the lord of all the worlds his care is not limited to any particular people or any particular age rather he is the lord of all peoples all ages and all lands he is the fountain head of all grace the source of all power physical and spiritual he nourishes all his creation and on him depends everything that exists his grace is universal and is spread over all peoples all countries and all ages therefore the quran opens by addressing all human beings generally and muslims specifically here and elsewhere also the quran informs everyone whoever they may be about its principles and it guides its own followers on how to act in order to put the principles into practical effect in this case humanity is informed that god is the lord and carer of all of them and muslims repeatedly recite this short chapter to remind themselves of the ways of god and to behave in the world with the same outlook as god's outlook on this world are we muslims first or are we human beings first and then muslims there may be more than one good answer to this question one answer is we are muslims for the very reason that we can learn from islam how to be human beings first 
without the guidance of the broad teachings of the Quran, a person will fall back on his narrow racial, tribal, national, religious prejudices and look down upon others as lesser mortals. Regarding this, the Quran says, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَى نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاؤُهُ قُلْ فَلِمَ يُعَذِّبُكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقُ And the Jews and the Christians say, We are the sons of God Allah and his beloved ones. Say to them, why does he then punish you for your sins? Rather, you are mortals from among those whom he has created. 5.18 This applies to all those who claim to be the favourites of God, including Muslims. Jews and Christians are only mentioned as examples. Strangely, all such claimants also admit that they are punished by God. The Bible again and again mentions the transgressions of the Jews and the resulting punishment of God upon them. Muslims today lament over their woes, saying how they are suffering all kinds of disasters everywhere. If we are the beloved and chosen ones of Allah, the question is, why does he then punish you for your sins? The Quran says to all such people, If you are the selected ones of God, why is he bringing this distress upon you? The answer is, all of you are mortals, like anyone else. If you do good, you will gain, and if you do wrong, you will suffer. Christian critics of the Quran say that the Prophet Muhammad misunderstood what they mean by calling Jesus a son of God. They say they mean it spiritually and metaphorically not physically, and that the Prophet Muhammad, being unlearned, did not realize that the term son of God can also be used in these fine and subtle senses. However, the above verse clearly shows that the Holy Prophet was perfectly aware that sons of Allah can be used as meaning his beloved ones. The Holy Prophet never thought for a moment that the Jews and Christians were claiming to be sons of God physically.